Good morning. It's raining here in Southern California, so I didn't have to garden at all today. I didn't have to water, and it's too wet to go outside. So I'm going to make my favorite, favorite soup. It's a fall soup, and early in our marriage, I used to have a fall harvest party for all of our couple friends, and we would have this soup and a cheese board and um, some lovely fresh bread. And so it's a recipe that I didn't get from the internet. I don't know actually where I got it. It's called curried squash soup. And the, re the reason you can tell that I didn't get it from the internet, this is the recipe. It's on an old index card, you know, it's all <laughs> crazy. So I'm gonna make this today for the family and um, save some for my Jenny and Biff too. And then we're gonna have dinner by the fire, have a cozy little fire, have dinner by the fire, and I'm gonna make some pumpkin bread for dessert. So that's my plan. And I'm gonna show you as I go. I've been making this soup for a very long time. And so when I was in the store today, I didn't have the recipe with me and I just sort of got the inspiration to do it as I was walking down the vegetable aisle. And I just rem I just happened to remember, okay, well, I need about eight squash. I need about, you know, four tomatoes. It was funny that I had that memory. So it's called curried squash soup. Perfect for a rainy day. The first thing that you do is you have to coarsely mince a uh, large onion. I used to do this completely by hand, but now, you know what, since in the end you puree the whole, all of the vegetables, it doesn't matter. So I'm just putting everything in the um, Cuisinart and it's gonna taste delicious in any case. The next step is that you need to peel and seed four large tomatoes. Now, I am pretty sure that I've made this recipe without peeling or seeding the tomatoes, but I am gonna do it today because it's gonna be a special soup and it's gonna be the highlight of the dinner. <laughs> I'm done with the tomatoes, I'm done with the onions, and I'm now going to situate the crookneck squash. I've cut it in half and I'm going to put it on I'm going to put the Cuisinart on medium shred uh, because I think that's the closest to uh, sort of coarsely chopped because I'm not going to chop all of them by hand. Let's see how it goes. Here's the crookneck squash. I think that it's going to be fine. It's, you know, in little chunks, maybe a little smaller than chunks, <laughs> but it's not pureed or anything. It's just, you know, in pieces. So here we go. The recipe calls for two tablespoons unsalted butter. I use whatever butter I have. <laughs> and uh, one teaspoon of oil. Now the funny thing is that this recipe is so old that it doesn't say, you know, virgin olive oil, which all recipes do these days when you're gonna be sauteing something. So I'm just gonna use regular vegetable oil. I don't think it matters that much. Maybe olive oil is a little bit healthier, but this will be fine, it's just a teaspoon. I'm adding the onion. I'm gonna saute until it's soft, but not brown. Okay, I'm adding the squash. Mmm, so much squash. Ah, lots of squash. This will be good for us, all that squash. You know, did I tell you, some of my winter garden is coming up. Mm -hmm. Especially the radishes. The radishes are very happy few beets, some lettuce. Now they're just tiny shoots coming up. So I'm, got, I'm happy about that. Okay, so and then the tomatoes. Okay. And let's see, add squash tomatoes and chicken broth. Six cups of chicken broth. All right, six cups of chicken broth. And stir. Okay, I'm going to stir. Gotta get the spoon. Let me get the spoon to stir. Okay. All right. It's already looking gorgeous. 
you know, also I wanted to tell you that um, we were so happy to get the rains, always happy to get the rains here in California for the crops and for our gardens. But because of the fires in our uh, near our cabin, the rains um, impeded the spread of the fire. So the fire is almost contained. I don't think we're worried about it anymore in terms of um, getting to our cabin. But now, mudslides and boulders on the road. So, whew, it's not one thing, it's another. So we're waiting to hear what happens because we did hear that Visalia had really, really big rains. And that's the city, not Visalia, Three Rivers had really big rains. And that's the city just below Mineral King where our cabin is. And they generally have twice as much rain up in the mountains. All right, now we're gonna put in the uh, three spices which is curry nutmeg and cumin and then three-fourths cup of brown sugar okay i'm just gonna stir it up and bring it to a boil it's boiling and so i'm going to partially cover it and let it simmer turn it down for 30 minutes so now, after the 30 minutes of simmer, I'm going to transfer it to the Cuisinart so that uh, I can puree it. It's a little bit tricky, and it takes several batches, So, plus it's super hot. I used to not have a Cuisinart in the early days, and I would use a blender. I had, <laughs> I had this really expensive Oster, Oster blender that my husband bought me for one of our anniversaries. Okay, that was not okay. <laughs> a blender for your anniversary. I had to really explain to him what an anniversary present should look like. You could tell how early on that was. <laughs> Anyways, all right, I'm gonna puree it and I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the puree. I'm putting it into the bowls as you can see. And I'm gonna put a tiny bit of sour cream on the top, a little bit of a um, green salad, and some toasted garlic bread. I'll show you how it looks. It's delicious. <laughs> 